morning we are currently heading to uh the first dairy farm tour we're going to be doing and uh, we just stopped at a gas station at a shell to get some coffee we're trying out some breakfast burritos they're pretty tasty little things those are good and we're gonna head to that uh, dairy farm right now see you guys when we get there So we just got to the farm and we met up with Brian here and Luke and they're going to be touring us around the farm. Uh, do you guys maybe want to give us a quick overview of what this farm is and how many cows and that sort of thing? Yeah. So how's it going guys? My name is Brian. I'm one of the managers here at LNJ Vanderham Dairy. Uh, we started our YouTube channel pretty a couple months ago and uh, this is our dairy. We have about 5,100 cows that we're milking. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess we're going to walk around. And uh, he said he had a YouTube channel, so we'll link that down below. And uh, if you guys heard that, 5,100 cows, that is insane. But uh, we'll check it out. So I mean, here's one of our medicine rooms. Okay. Uh, and then, um, yeah, there's, I don't know if you want to check it out. So yeah, this allows us just to keep track of which employee is getting our medicine and uh, inventory, just to be able to keep track of it. That's cool. Vending machine for medicine. <laughs> you ever seen one of those? Or no. no. Some big plate coolers too, I see. Wow. One's for each side, so then we also have one for each side. And then they all go in. One goes to the top and one to the bottom. perfectly under the udder and it has pretty good uh, accuracy and that way our guys uh, they just have to wipe and test them instead of just uh, having to treat it. Huh. So we just installed this a couple months back and uh, yeah it's a pretty big learning curve for the cows just because uh, they are uh, scared of it at first they're not used to seeing something as they're walking in but after a while I mean they're they get used to it. Yeah, so our guys are checking each cow, and it's pretty important just because you don't want any infections or uh, diseases in the milk. It's pretty important to give out a good quality milk. So this cow here tested, she wasn't the best, so that's why they leave a towel, and they'll uh, go ahead and separate her and send her out to a site. Pretty cool. Same as what we do back at home. Yeah. It's good to see you guys are still caring about the quality of milk yeah. and this many cows still. That's always one of the main important parts just because we want everybody to have a good product for our Yep. So 
Well, you said your cows were averaging what 101. 101 pounds. Yeah. That is, that's impressive. Yeah, so we don't have the most advanced system just because there is, since it is a big operation, there's lots of breakdowns and uh, there's lots of downtime with uh, our system. We've been thinking about putting in a new system. Uh, obviously, before we were running a, a different system, but right now we're going with something very simple, which is just a little. Was it? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, this really minimizes the breakdowns and uh, there's not really a lot of downtime at all. And uh, yeah, the guys are pretty efficient at it. As soon as they finish on this side, by the time it's usually done, it's this side just starts to off. So there's there's no auto takeoffs on here. No. no, but that's that would save on breakdowns like for sure. And then here you can see one of our guys who's doing and checking the cows, whatever's finished, he takes off the milker and sprays it. So we can fit about we can fit about 400 cows in each wash pen, and uh, there's also these crowd gates that are going half ways. So typically we'll split one pen in half. So one pen's about 400 cows. We'll split in half, 200, 200 per side, and uh, pull the gate back. And then once this pen finishes, they'll just lift it up and bring the other ones forward. Wow. Yeah. If you see back here, there's a pretty big pile of well, you can't really see. But um, yeah, we're cleaning up our fence right now just because uh, winter basically passed for us. Uh, there might be a couple rains, but not as bad anymore. And yeah, we're just really trying to clean up the fence. This here, uh, this is one of our older tractors. We're not using that right now. But that's what we used to rake our uh, freestyle beds and also push in the feed. And with this back part, uh, he's able to like uh, sweep the alleys. Right on. Yeah. Here's the 5044, the 544. Uh, this is one of the loaders that we use outside as well. Um, I think it's one of the older ones. This tractor, we use it to haul our side dump. So that's probably in the back. And this tractor, I believe we use it to till our uh, back barns. Okay. So um, since we are using dried manure as, a pa as bedding, uh, we like to mix it up and make it as fluffy and soft for the cows as possible. Sweet. Yeah. Let's get the rotor tiller on there. Yeah. So here you can see there's two lanes. 
as the cows are coming out. So if there's any cows with problems, we'll go ahead and send them on this side. And um, so they'll stay up locked up in here while the rest return to their pen to eat. And that's these cows that you see here. So these are cows that have problems or stuff and they're just left on this uh, side pen to where they get treated later. Okay. So that's your catch pen? Yeah, catch pen. There's one on each side. Okay. How many cows can you fit in your catch pen? Uh, I'm not sure, probably about 30. At 30? That's pretty good. I guess I guess we could fit like four in ours, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is pen nine. And here we keep our cows that are um, either had a foot issue or a little lame. Just older cows that struggle, that way they don't walk as much. Okay. Keep them close to the milking parlor. Yeah, we get lots of bag and rep for being a big operation, but we truly do try to give the cows the best comfort we possibly give them, as well as take care of our animals. Absolutely. So here, this is our special needs pet. That's a Texas gate, I guess. Cattle uh, guard. Yeah. Texas yeah. gate. Yeah. Cattle guard. Yeah. Yeah, we have these between most of our pens, just now we don't need gates and the tractors they move past. So here, this is our special needs pen. These that you see marked with teeth, they've had penicillin or other antibiotics. So these are cows that do not get mixed with our uh, regular tank of milk. There's a separate tank on the side, we can probably show you guys in a little bit. But yeah, these are the cows. It's very important not to mix it with the rest of the milk, just because we want to keep it as uh, safe as possible for, for us to drink. If, if you guys have any Penicillin or treated cows, you just keep them in the separate keep pen, them milk them. Yeah, these are separate with the rest of them. It's cool. Uh, so here we are at one of our close-up pens. So these are cows that are about to give birth. And um, here you can see our bedding. These are pack barns where we keep our uh, close-ups. And the bedding is basically just dry manure. And every day they'll till it just to keep it fluffy and um, as comfortable as possible for the cows. Yeah, here you can see uh, one of our flush gates. So this is how we clean our alleys instead of having a tractor go through them since there's so many pens. Uh, the flush will turn, in, turn on automatically every, I wanna say every hour or so, and it'll flush everything out. And we'll go ahead and show you guys in the back how it looks where everything lands. <laughs> so yeah, water's gonna come out of this pit right here and flush this entire barn. And you guys might not be able to tell so good on video, but all these barns are sloped down one way and that kind of helps the water flow and clean those alleys out. So this pile that you see right here, this is our feed. We clean our uh, our feed bunks every day and this will be reused into our lower production cows. Okay, okay so here we are at our commodity barn uh, for feed tractors. We run two eight hours along with two feed wagons. Same Larry. Yeah, and then uh, for we have one motor and uh, usually it's two guys. So one will be just driving tractors, the other one's making the mixes. So as, as one guy is dumping the load for the feed, the other guy's making the other mix. So that's why you see one tractor parked right here and the other one's out feeding somewhere. Yeah, so um, cows are actually pretty amazing animals just because they're able to consume lots of products that we can. So we also have, uh, we feed TDG, which is a byproduct from producing ethanol. And um, so that's something that we can't consume and the cow can. And she's able to produce milk, which we can't consume. So they're pretty amazing animals. We also give whey. Whey is a byproduct of making cheese. And again, that's something that isn't really useful for us, but they're pretty good for the cows. And um, they're able to make milk, and from there we can get other products. Yeah, the other, other products we have are, are almond hulls. That's the outside of the shell of, the, of an almond. Uh, that's another ingredient that if we didn't consume to our animals, it, it would basically go to landfills, right? So, uh, and then there behind us, you see the bakery. So that's uh, kind of a blend of muffins and tortillas, and, uh, cupcakes uh, that the, that's not consumable for humans, but we're able to, uh, yeah, make a blend for. Uh, yeah, it's just so, wow. It's just the waste of uh, all the food that we throw away. So they take them to a plant, from there they're able to process it and we get it to our cows. Hmm. And that's kind of been like what I've been lately like amazed on these animals, right? I mean, we're a uh, sixth generation dairy farmer, right? And just the past couple of months, I've just, yeah, with, with having the solar, with having the digester, renewing that energy, being able to sell it and re reusing kind of these, uh, these ingredients that we can't consume that otherwise would go to landfills. I just, yeah, it's just these, these animals are amazing, right? So, yeah. 
Yeah, so we're here in the back with some of our silage piles, and we'll drive out in the back show you guys some more. Here we have some of our corn, and as well as some of our milo or sorghum. Yeah, we had some issues with that uh, pile, so the top you can see it's a little uh, molded. So we'll have our guys come and clean it out, and that's what that pile over there was, just a uh, feed that we're not feeding the cows, we want to give them the best quality as possible. The top layer is kind of bad, like we said, so we can, our guys come out and clean it. Sweet. And from these piles here, what we did, like, that's our last normal pile that we packed like that. So now we're doing these rollover piles like you see back here. We're able to get two tractors. We have no spoilage on top. So this is kind of a, a, a before and after of, of how we're wanting to get these piles. So, okay. yeah. So this one will just leave less opportunity for like air pockets to yeah, exactly, happen yeah. underneath so plastic. So like here we're probably getting an 8% shrink, something like that, of loss. So here we should minimize that to almost nothing, right? So uh, yeah. So here we are at the back of our dairy. Uh, these are typically our lower production pens, these open pens, um, or the cows that are closer to getting dried. Here you can see in the back uh, some of the custom guys hauling out some manure as well. Um, it's just starting to get dry enough to where we could come out and uh, clean the pens, try to keep it as clean as possible. Under these shades, we'll typically come uh, once a week, clean them out, and then uh, put some fresh bedding for the cows to be comfortable and uh, just uh, be able to lay on something that's a little softer. Sweet. So today we do actually have vet checks, so that's why you'll see lots of our pens are locked up. Um, we also do have our breeder that comes out every day and so he is locking up all the cows. We try to keep it uh, for the least amount of time as possible, just for the cows to um, not be standing there as long. But I mean, they do have feed either way, so they are able to eat. And um, yeah, so we'll see if we run into our breeder right now as well, well as the vet. Sweet. Another cool thing is these shaders. It looks like they're just some tarps tied up to, uh, to a shell frame, I guess. Yeah. Oh, and their drill stem too, eh? Yeah. That's cool. And then here you can see if you want to come on the edge. The summers here do get pretty hot. So we do also have these sprinklers here. And um, they'll just miss the cow while they're eating. That way they stay cool and fresh during the hot summers. That's cool. So Brian and Luke did an awesome job of touring us around their dairy farm there. And they actually went into pretty deep detail about their manure handling system, as well as some crops out in the fields like pistachios and grapes. So uh, if I put this all into one video, it'd probably get close to 40 minutes long. So I figured I'd break it up into two parts. Uh, so tune in for part two, I guess, if you wanna see uh, that side of their dairy farm operation. And I uh, hope to see you guys over there.